Why does one person get choked up over a Hallmark commercial while another shed tears only for the death of a loved one? Does the exhortation, have a good cry, carry physiological or psychological merit? And how do crying behaviors differ among cultures and between the sexes? New research by psychologists is beginning to answer these questions, helping us better understand what human tears mean from social, psychological, and neuroscientific perspectives. I think the study of crying, more than is the case for any other emotional expression, may help us to obtain a better insight into human nature, says leading tear researcher Ad Vingerhoots, PhD, a psychology professor at Tilburg University in the Netherlands. Vingerhoots and others are tracking people's crying episodes to determine the role culture plays in why we cry, measuring the chemical makeup of tears, and examining the reactions they trigger in others. They're also learning how crying helps us connect with others by studying those who can't do it. Several factors play a role in an individual's propensity to cry. Gender differences in crying, for example, have been explored for decades and across the world, and all of the studies reach the same conclusion. Women cry more than men. In the 1980s, biochemist William H. Fry, Ph.D., found that women cry an average of 5.3 times a month, while men cry an average of 1.3 times per month, with crying defined as anything from moist eyes to full-on sobbing. Those averages still appear to be about the same, suggests newer research, including work by Lauren Belisma, Ph.D. of the University of Pittsburgh. Biologically, there may be a reason women cry more than men. Testosterone may inhibit crying, while the hormone prolactin, seen in higher levels in women, may promote it. But a desire to cry is not all nature. Crying may also reflect attachment styles, research suggests. In her book, Seeing Through Tears, Crying and Attachment, psychotherapist Judith K. Nelson, Ph.D., summarizes past research and concludes that securely attached people are more comfortable expressing emotions and cry in ways that are considered normal and healthy, while those with insecure attachment may cry inappropriately. More recently, researchers from Tilburg University have found that people with dismissive attachment styles, or those who tend to avoid close relationships with others, were less likely to cry and tried harder to inhibit their tears than people with other attachment styles. The study also found that people with preoccupied styles, or those who might be clingy and overly dependent on others, cried more often than securely attached people. Women of all attachment styles cried more than men. Is crying good for you? For infants, tears serve as an important communication tool, allowing them to show their need for support. That tool may also serve us well in adulthood, several recent studies have found. One study showed participants images of faces with tears, and faces with tears digitally removed, as well as tear-free control images. Subjects judged the faces with tears as appearing sadder. However, participants rated those with tears removed more ambiguously. Not simply less sad, but reflecting a range of uncertain emotions, such as concern or contemplation. Tears add balance and nuance to the perception of faces, says the study's lead author, Robert R. Provine, Ph.D., a professor of psychology and neuroscience at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Tears become a sort of social lubricant, he says, helping to ensure the smooth functioning of a community by helping people communicate. Bearing this out, Researchers at Tilburg University have demonstrated that at even very short exposure times, respondents report being more willing to provide support to people with visible tears than to those without tears, Evolutionary Psychology 2013. Tears may also serve as a therapeutic role, though researchers say the supposedly cathartic role of a good cry has been overstated. If you feel unable to ask for help directly, your tears can convey this request without words. Keep in mind that this doesn't mean you're crying on purpose. They're a bodily response that most people can't easily control. 
30 years ago, biochemist Fry found that emotional tears carried more protein than non-emotional tears, say from chopping an onion. The implication was that when you cry for emotional reasons, you are involved in a healing process. Research offers a new insight into tears. Why you cry and who sees you do it appear to make a difference in whether crying helps or hurts your emotional state. In the study, it was found that crying was more likely to make people feel better when they had emotional support, such as a close friend nearby. If they were crying due to a positive event, or if their crying led to a resolution or new understanding of the situation that led them to cry in the first place. Criers felt worse if they felt embarrassed or ashamed of crying if they were with unsupportive people, or if they cried because they saw suffering. Overall, participants were more likely to feel better if they cried alone or around one other person, but felt worse or didn't experience a mood change if they were with two or more people. The inability to cry. Psychologists have also gleaned new insights into people who can't produce tears at all, either emotional or the basal tears that keep eyes lubricated. Ophthalmologists have typically treated dry eye as a medical issue, completely missing the fact that emotional communication is impaired when you lack tears. They have not attended to important psychological and social consequences. Wingerhotz, author of the 2013 book Why Only Humans Weep, Unraveling the Mysteries of Tears, is exploring what happens to people who can't cry with neurologist Michael Trimble, MD, at the Institute of Behavioral Neurology at University College London. The project came about after a BBC interview with Trimble resulted in 900 people emailing to say they couldn't cry and would like to volunteer to be studied. What are some practical reasons why people cry? To get help, to relieve pain, to form and strengthen social bonds, to process emotions, to sympathize, to get your needs met. If you feel hesitant about crying around others, remember, crying doesn't indicate weakness. Since tears can help people realize you're experiencing pain and distress, you might benefit more from letting them fall than holding them back. Just watch out for excessive, uncontrollable tearfulness and crying, since these can sometimes suggest depression. So go on, cry if you want to, even if it's not your party. <laughs>